Thank you, everyone. Well, it's very exciting to be here today. Um, so for the last sort of 10 years or so, I've been engaged in this kind of rather interesting artistic performance practice, which is live coding musical concerts in, you know, live in front of an audience. And, you know, I've been carrying out these kind of performances in lots of different venues, from sort of, you know, very small venues like you can see here, through to, you know, quite large venues like we have here today. Um, and you can kind of see uh, here, this is a duet. You can see our screens. This is a colleague of mine, Andrew Brown, that I'm doing a duet with here. And um, it's worth saying as well that these kind of things happen in, you know, quite a number of different contexts. So here, for example, I'm actually programming two robotic pianos. Um, so one of the neat things about this performance is that these robotic pianos are obviously acoustic, right? So this is an acoustic performance which is being generated by a computer. And the genre in this uh, context was actually a, a sort of a jazz piano concert. Um, but of course, you know, the bedrock of a lot of this practice is in the, the digital electronic space, and this is a, uh, a nightclub performance. This is actually in the belly of a ship called the MS Stubnitz, really kind of amazing arts venue. Um, and so there's also this uh, context of, you know, working in sort of nightclub scene, um, as well as sort of electronic uh, music scene, um, experimental scene, but also, as I was saying before, in sort of more uh, traditional acoustic uh, sort of scenarios. But this kind of thing is best experienced live rather than talked about. So I'm going to do a little concert for you today. Um, what I'm going to do that I haven't done before is I'm going to try and narrate a little bit of what I'm doing as I'm going along. So rather than just playing the performance all the way through, uh, which I am going to do, but I'm going to try and talk over it a little bit. And we'll, we'll, we'll see how this all works out. So hold on to your hats. Um, we're going to do a live coding musical concert for you now. So what I'm going to start with is, of course, you know, uh, snippets, you know. So uh, this is basically just some boilerplate code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name and we need an instrument for this. I'm going to give it a volume. The numbers I'm working with today sort of span uh, from 0 to 127, so a volume silence is 0, as loud as it gets is 127. Uh, I'm going to evaluate this expression and then I'm going to put some uh, pitch information in here. So I'm going to say... 557.59, so this is two uh, Gs, then followed by uh, an A and then a B. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a duration, uh, and we're going to say one here. And now we're going to set this off and running. Okay, so we've got this little cell running around here. And this thing, this kind of design pattern here is called a temporal recursion. So basically the function calls itself, it plays a note, and then it calls itself back in the future. And so we get this kind of looping going around. But, of course, we don't just want one note, you know. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to define a root. We want some kind of harmonic progression going here. Um, so I'm going to do a little offset to the piano here. Okay, so we're going to start building up this piece live, and I'm going to be changing all these algorithms live as we're going along. So now what I want to do is I want to change the harmonic progression here. So, but I don't want that to happen all the time. I want that to happen on the first beat of every second bar. So I'm going to put a little modulo in. This beat number is just sort of continuing around here. So we're going to set this, and I'm going to choose a you know, random number. Um, I don't want to have the same thing twice, so we'll uh, remove from this list the current root. So now we're seeing that this sort of harmonic progression is being built up. Of course, we're using some evil global state here with this root, but this is make, to make it easier for me to actually have integrate other parts. So I actually want to set up another concurrent part now. So I'm going to call this, uh, you know, we'll call this right hand. Uh, I'm going to use a cosine now to produce a, sort of an arpeggiated pattern in the right hand. I'm going to do the same thing with the volume, and we'll make the duration a little longer because I sort of want it to continue over. But then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some basic set theory to uh, quantize this over a scale so that it sort of fits in with the harmonic scale. So I'm going to define a scale up here. Oops, call this scale. Okay, so now we can start off this right hand. 
So now we have this kind of arpeggiation happening in the right hand, but you'll also see that harmonically this is moving around because what is currently the root is then defining where this right hand is sort of moving around. So let me bring in now a bass line, just something to kind of ground this, this, this root element that we're looking at. that we've got. This is sort of an F FM synthesizer, but it's sort of trying to be sounding like a traditional electric bass guitar. And this is just going to play along with that, uh, that root. Um, but I'd like some sort of nice sparkly stuff up the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, right hand of the piano. I'm going to put a little conditional in here where we're just going to check for a probability. We basically want to say that 40% of the time we're going to play a note on a synthesizer. So put this FM synthesizer back in here again, and I'm going to play up a fifth, uh, but still quantized to the scale. Um, and we'll give the instrument some parameters. So here we go. So now we have this little sort of sparkly synth sitting on top. It's not playing all the time, it's just coming in sort of 40% of the time. But it's basically mimicking the right hand of the piano, but, but up a fifth and just popping up every now and then. So to give this a little more drive, I'm actually going to put in a kick drum now. Uh, we'll give a little upbeat for the kick drum make it a little softer and this should give us a little bit of a little bit more energy when I bring it in here okay so you can hear that kick it's giving us a little bit of drive and now to finish off this drum part I'm going to bring in some hi-hats and all we're going to do is just choose between two different hi-hats um, but again, I'm going to give it some nice kind of uh, pulsiness. And we're actually just going to, again, choose from two different offsets for the cosine wave that we're using here. I'll bring in the hi-hats now. And so you'll see there's this kind of stochasticness happening in this random now for the rhythm of the hi-hat. So we're getting it kind of like the drummer's playing with sort of pulsations happening in this rhythmic part. So now I'm just going to add a little more to this harmonic progression to actually bring it back to a nice kind of happy major. And I'm going to flick it back up the octave for the FM synth and bring it in all the time. So we're kind of coming to the sort of the uh, climax of the piece, for want of a better word. So from here, I'm actually now just going to start pulling everything out slowly. And I'll just, I'll, I'll stop talking now and I'll let the sound guys bring it up a little bit on the desk. And I'll just slowly take, take this out by sort of winding everything back down again.
And there we go. Thank you.